Architectural Site Analysis, The Checklist, brought to you by First in Architecture. The site analysis is one of the first stages of your design project. The more information you can gather from your site analysis, the better informed you'll be to produce a really great design. So make sure you're thorough. Yep, your site analysis starts before you get to the site. In order to get the best out of your visit, make sure that you go through all the information that you already have regarding the project before you go. If you study your brief thoroughly and any existing drawings that you might have, it may raise questions or areas of the site that you'll want to look at in more detail. If you already have a dimension site drawing, make sure you check it to make sure all the key dimensions are there on the drawing. If not, then you know that you can do some measurements whilst you're on site. By doing a bit of this pre-visit reading, you'll arrive on site knowing exactly what you need to find out from the site and know exactly what you're looking for. There are a few essentials that I think you should take to site with you, um, and these are a camera, a notebook, a tape measure and good weather. So firstly the camera, well this is essential these days. Make sure you take pictures of everything. It's great to have a good selection of images of the site so that when you get back to your desk you can refer to them throughout your analysis and design process. Uh, make sure you get some shots of the site from a distance as well so that you can use these in your final images, you know, your CGI's and things like that. It's really frustrating when you go to the trouble of visiting a site and you come back wishing you had taken more pictures. Don't be embarrassed about taking pictures if it's in a built up area. No one cares what you're doing. Tape measure is really dependent on the brief, but um, also on the information that you've been provided already. It's useful to have a tape measure with you when you go on site though. Some may be close to hazards or situations where you'll need to measure the proximity. There may be essential dimensions missing from the information you've been given regarding the project, so you may need to note down these as well. And a note on the weather, it's always good if you have a choice of a day to visit the site, try and pick a day where there's a little bit of blue sky, a little bit of sunshine. It will make your photos look better, and particularly if you're planning on using them for future presentations. I would suggest you take with you a checklist of items to look out for, and you can check it off as you go so you don't miss anything. My list would go a little bit like this. Uh, site location, things like road names, the address, major landmarks, just the general details about the site. Uh, the current context of the site, you know, existing buildings, car parking, roads, things like that. Um, the access to the site. Is there car parking in proximity to the site? Are there bus routes, uh, bus stops, you know, how close are these to the site? Things like uh, train stations, is it on a good train network? What about cycle routes? Are these uh, anywhere near to the site? Pedestrian walkways, things like that. And finally, accessibility. Are there current provisions of disabled access to the site and how will this need to be considered in your design? The next thing I'd look at is uh, circulation. How do visitors, pedestrians or traffic near to the site flow around it or within the site? Vegetation, is there landscaping, greenery, shrubs, trees, open spaces? Take this on board. Views, what are the best views to and from the site? Which is most likely to be a feature aspect? And then the building context, what style, period or state of the repair of the surrounding buildings? Is it a historical area? Is it maybe in a conservation area? Or are the buildings nearby perhaps listed? Next we can look at what sort of materials and surfaces there are around the site. Maybe start thinking about the site levels. How will, how will the levels affect your design process? Uh, how does the drainage work on the site and will there be any potential problems with drainage? Weather. How does the weather affect the site? Is it well shaded or is it really exposed and will this have a, a big sway on your design? And noise, odour and pollution. Is the site in a really noisy area? Will that have a sway on, on the materials perhaps that you choose for your design? Or is it near industrial buildings that produce levels of pollution or near a facility that creates a lot of smoke? All of these things you should be really trying to take on board while you're on site and start to think how they'll affect your design. Here I've listed a few hazards that you should look out for. Now some of these hazards and many others would be difficult to know without having surveys carried out and things like that. But I think it's always good to show your tutors that you've considered the hazards that could be on or around the site. Once you get back to your computer there are just a few more things that you can look at. First being the climate conditions of the site and the local area. Things like sun paths and sun angles, you can find all this out on the internet. Another thing that's really useful is to get hold of lots of aerial photographs, uh, Google Street View images, things like that. Um, Bing also have a really useful, um, slightly different aerial photographs that you could use. And finally, just have a look at the history of the site. Again, Google, 
um, and just find out what you can just to sort of inform your design. I'm sure there are loads more things that you could look at um, and each site is really different but hopefully this will give you a good starting point for getting the best out of your site analysis. And of course if you can't get to site you still want to answer as many of these questions as you can but they'll be much more reliant on your desktop studies of course. So this is the first in a three-part series helping you to produce the best site analysis that you can. Check out part two, evaluating your site analysis.